So I'm going to answer all your property questions for you right now. I asked Instagram and TikTok to tell me what their most pressing questions were when it comes down to property investing. Here are 11 of the most popular questions that I've been asked about property investing. So let's address every single one of them and help you understand property investing better. What property strategy can someone start with less than 10,000 pounds? One of the most popular ones would be deal sourcing. Deal sourcing is where you find a property for an investor. Now you can earn anything from 2,000 pounds to 5,000 pounds for bringing an investor an incredible deal. Now that could be if you are finding investors buy to let properties, finding them auction properties, finding them commercial properties. In a nutshell, you go out and you find deals for investors and they will pay you anything from 2,000 pounds to 5,000 pounds and it only costs a thousand pound to get started. Now that thousand pound is usually for compliance, which means you've got to pay for anti-money laundering, you've got to join the ICO, you've got to register with the PRS, and you've got to have insurance. Those are the pieces of compliance that you have to have in order to get started. A second option would be rent-to-rent -rent serviced accommodation. Rent-to-rent -rent serviced accommodation simply means you rent someone's property with their permission and you turn it into a small boutique hotel, AKA Airbnb. Now you can get started Started with less than £10,000. It's usually one month rent, one month deposit, and maybe the cost of furnishing the property. So if we're using London as an example, let's say the rent is £2,000, the deposit is £2,000, and you spend three or £4,000 on furnishing the property, that's still well below the £10,000 mark. How can I buy an auction property? Auctions can be quite complicated, and I don't suggest if you are brand new, you dive headfirst into an auction purchase. There are many key things that are often not spoken about when it comes down to auctions, such as how are you planning to fund the purchase? For the vast majority of auction purchases, you can't use a traditional mortgage. So it's either you're going to fund the purchase using cash, or you're going to use a bridge and loan. This leads into a greater issue because auction properties usually require 14 to 28 days to complete. And if you can't complete on that auction purchase during that time frame, there are severe penalties and you could lose your deposit. Now there are two different types of auctions. One of them is called an MMOA, which stands for Modern Method of Auction. And the other one is a traditional auction, which is what you see on TV. You might have watched Homes Under the Hammer where there are lots of people in the auction room and people are bidding on those properties. By the way, I've been on Homes Under the Hammer four times. I don't know why I thought to show that off. So buying a property at auction requires you to understand how auctions work. Let me just walk you through the things to consider if you're planning to buy at auction. Make sure you understand what the end value of that property is. Make sure you view the property at least three times, once by yourself, once with a builder, and then again by yourself. The reason you want to view it for the third time is when you go the first time, you've probably got your blinkers on. You're probably excited, you might not notice things. The second time you go with a builder and that builder gives you a quote. And then the third time you visit the property, now you're visiting the property based on factual data and based on costings. And you're able to analyze and see whether the costings that you've been handed actually make sense based on what your plans are with the property. Number two, make sure you have your finance in order. How are you planning to finance the property? Because once the gavel goes down, if you're using a traditional auction, you've got to pay 10% deposit, which is typically non-refundable. Number three, before you bid at the auction, make sure you read the legal pack. Now, just because you've got a degree in law doesn't mean you're capable of reading and understanding the legal pack. Get the legal pack and send it to your solicitor. There is usually a cost associated with that and that could be anything from 500 pound to 1,000 pound. Now that's traditional auction. I'm a big fan of modern method of auctions when it comes down to first time investors or first time auction investors. A modern method of auction auction typically gives you 56 days to complete on that property. 56 days is a good amount of time to go through the, the legals, to go through the conveyancing, to ask questions. But more importantly, it gives you the option to be able to also use a mortgage if you need to use a mortgage because you have some time. A typical mortgage can take more than 28 days, but in some cases with a good solicitor and a good broker, you can complete on some auction purchases within a 56 day period. Should I buy a residential property or an investment property first? This one really comes down to you as an individual. Buying a residential property in the UK requires an affordability assessment. The problem with the affordability assessment is the banks will only lend you four, in some cases, 4.5 times your salary. If the average property in the UK is around 280,000 pound, but the average salary in the UK is around 30,000 pound, on a 30,000 pound salary, 
you can only raise about 120 to 130 thousand pounds so that's not helpful so for some people let's say that live in london they might not be able to pass affordability to buy a property so if you know that the job that you're currently in is not going to automatically give you a 10 time pay rise which means you're never going to be able to pass affordability to buy a property in the location that you desire to buy a property then it might make sense to consider buying an investment property instead because the affordability criteria for an investment property is not based on your salary but more based on the income generated from the rental property. So should you buy an investment property first or residential property? It really depends on your circumstance. In order to buy an investment property for the vast majority of people, you only typically need to be earning around 15 to 20,000 pound per year. And a lender or a bank will give you the mortgage. And in some cases, there are some lenders that don't have a minimum income requirement. Can I really start in property with no money? Well, the truthful answer is no. Some people can, the vast majority of people cannot. Let me talk about the people that can, and that should help you understand why the vast majority of people cannot start without any money. The people that can start property with no money would be people that have experience and have a reputation and have an audience. So for example, if I lost everything, could I start again in property without any money? The answer is yes, because I will be able to utilize my network and my experience to borrow money from someone. A lot of times when you hear people talk about starting property with no money, it's actually rather disingenuous because money has to go into every property deal. Even if you don't have to buy the property, there's still solicitor fees, which is a thousand or two thousand pounds. They're still conveyancing another thousand pounds. There might be stamp duty, which is a few thousands of pounds. I want to correct this narrative because it's it's a very intentional narrative by people who are trying to sell you something, but also appeal to a certain group of people that are looking for an easy way to get into property. And there is no easy way to get into property. When they say no money, down what they really mean is you don't have to put money down somebody has to put the money down that's why I use myself as an example can I go to my network and get an investor to put money down the answer is yes but if you're brand new do you have access to an investor do you have the skill set do you have the experience do you have the trust for an investor to put money into a deal so for the vast majority of people they cannot start in property with no money but for a very select few they can start again in property with no money the truth is you do need some money and you should have some money when you're investing in property. You should always have some skin in the game and having some skin in the game ties you in emotionally, financially, and it makes sure that you are dedicated to ensuring that the property deal works. One of the different types of property strategies. I love this because the vast majority of people tend to think that the buy to let property strategy is the only property strategy and that is incorrect. There is a property strategy for each individual and each personality. So let me list all the different types Types of property strategies just off the top of my head. So number one is something called deal packaging, which is where you find a property for an investor and you get paid a fee. Number two, number three, and number four fall under a strategy called rent to rent. Rent to rent means you rent someone's property with their permission to carry out strategy two, strategy three, strategy four. So strategy two is rent to rent serviced accommodation, which is what you might recognize as rent to rent Airbnb. Strategy number three is what we call rent to rent HMO, where you turn a property into a house share and number four is rent to rent social housing where you rent a property from the owner and you re-rent that property to either a social housing provider or the local council to house asylum seekers, people that have just come out of prison or people with mental health issues. Number five, a buy to let, where you buy a property, you put down a 25% deposit and that's the entry point of becoming a landlord. So the first four that I spoke about are what we call property businesses or property entrepreneurship. And number five and above are property investment, where you become a property investor because now you're buying assets and you're investing in those assets. And in some cases you have ownership over those assets. Whereas the first four, they are property businesses. So let's talk about number five, buy to let, which is the most popular property strategy in the UK. There are 2.7 million buy to let landlords in the UK who are providing accommodation for more than 4.6 million people in the UK. This is the strategy that most people assume they want to get into when they hear about property investing, but there are so many other options. So number six is what we call BRRR, which stands for buy, reconfigure, rent, and then refinance. This is where you can buy a property, add significant value to the property, refinance that property and then rent it out and in some cases you're able to get back some of the money you put into that property then you can buy auction properties which is a strategy by itself then you can do flips then you can buy commercial properties and convert that property to a residential or you can buy commercial property 
and, and rent that property to a commercial business like Papa John's, Tesco, Superdrugs, or a blue chip company. Then you can buy land and do development projects. So there are so many different options. And what you want to do is pick the one that works with how much money you have available, how much time is required to run that business, and what your goals are. Are you looking for income or are you looking for capital appreciation? That's how you determine which property strategy you're going to pursue. And this is a very popular one. Can I buy a buy to let as a first time buyer? The answer is yes. Now, a lot of people simply assume that you have to have your own property as a residential before you can buy an investment property. And there is some truth to it. Most banks would prefer that you have some level of experience holding or owning a property before you become a buy-to-let investor. Because with buy-to-let, remember the criteria to acquire a buy-to-let is completely different from the criteria to buy residential property. The referencing process, the affordability process is slightly reduced because it's based on your ability to rent out this property and manage this property and be a landlord. But will a bank lend to you if you don't have a residential property? The answer is yes. Many banks will still lend to you even if you don't have a residential property or experience as a landlord. Should you buy a house or a flat? The things to consider is when you are buying a house, you are in most cases a freeholder, which gives you the ability to do what you want to the property. You can do a loft conversion if you want to, you can do an extension if you want to, you can change the inside of the house should you want to. Whereas on the flip side, if you are a leaseholder, which means you have a flat, don't have the ability or the freedom to do as you wish. So a freeholder means you technically own the land, well, Owning the land is debatable because the king owns all the land in the UK, but technically you own the land in which the structure is built on. So you own the land in which your house sits on. Whereas as a leaseholder, you are technically borrowing your flat for a period of time, which could be 99 years, 199 years, or 999 years. When trying to make that decision on whether to buy a house or a flat, many people end up buying flats because there are more flats available. Typically developers can build up as opposed to build out. So there are more flats available to purchase, but also flats are typically cheaper, or so you think. You've got to consider the cost of having a flat. Service charge, ground rent. For the vast majority of people, your service charge is going to be over a thousand pounds. So you've got to factor that into your cost and your mortgage. As a freehold house, there are no costs. Now it's important to add a caveat here. There are a few leasehold houses, but for the vast majority of houses, they are typically freehold. But the main thing I would be considering whether I should buy a house or a flat would be the cost associated with a flat. Hey guys, if you're getting value from this and you have questions that you want me to answer, make sure you like, comment and subscribe and pop your questions in the comment section below. Hi guys, I've got to clarify right from the beginning, this is not financial advice. Always seek advice from a professional. Which strategy should I start with? What a great question. It's worth understanding what strategies are available. But when people typically ask me this question on TikTok or Instagram, the first thing I need to know from them is, what is your goal? Why are you investing in property? Are you looking for capital appreciation or cash flow? I'm a firm believer that if you're not earning over £5,000 per month consistently, your focus should be on investing to create more income because income gives you the ability to take risk. Income takes care of your day to day. Income takes care of your bills, your mortgage, your family. Income gives you peace of mind to take greater risk and to make further investments. But more importantly, capital appreciation opportunity requires significantly more money and the payout is in five, 10, 15 years time. So before you start investing for five, 10, 15 years, you've got to make sure that your investments take care of your immediate financial needs. So that's a question you've got to ask yourself. Do I want capital appreciation, meaning do I earn enough today so I can tuck away money that will pay me later on in the future? Or am I okay and I'm ready to start investing and tuck my money away because I can get access to it in 10, 15, 20 years. Question number two, how much time do you have available? Are you a single mom? Are you a busy entrepreneur? Do you have a full-time job? Do you have a part-time job? The different property strategies require a different amount of time and a different amount of involvement. And question number three, obviously the most important, how much cash do you have available? There are some strategies that you can start with less than 5,000 pounds. There are some strategies that require 20,000 pounds. There are some strategies that require over 100,000 pounds to start. So for example, if you say I'm looking for income, 
then you have no business jumping straight ahead and going to buying a plot of land and trying to become a developer because a developer might get paid in one year's time once the project is completed. And how much cash do you currently have available? Now, it's important to understand this. It's not how much cash can you raise, it's how much cash do you have available. That stops you from being over ambitious because everyone can write down on their business plan, I plan to raise a billion pounds, so therefore I'm going to start by doing you know, skyscraper towers. No, it's how much cash do you have available? If you've got 10,000 pounds in your bank, it means you can start property strategies that require less than 10,000 pounds to start. If you've got 200,000 pounds, then it opens up other options for you to consider. Very popular question, my credit isn't great, can I still buy a property? Now I'm very cautious how I answer this because there's a lot of people that's written themselves off. They've made up this narrative, albeit from social media and gurus like myself saying the wrong things, but don't write yourself off on whether you can buy a property without speaking to a qualified advisor. Let me help you understand how lending works. Just because you have bad credit doesn't mean there isn't a bank out there that will not work with you. Your broker might have to go to a specialist lender, but typically your credit isn't as bad as you think it is until a bank come back and tell you that we cannot lend to you and they'll tell you the reasons why so you therefore know what you need to work on. Don't self-diagnose yourself and say, oh no, my credit is bad, I can't buy a property. Speak to a broker. So the way the mortgage market works is you go to a broker, you explain your situation to a broker, your broker will ask you for your credit file and your credit report. Your broker will then go to different lenders. Let's imagine there are 100 lenders in the market, 100 different banks in the market. Your broker will approach every single one of them and say, hey, I've got this client, they earn 50,000 pound per year, their credit is absolutely crappy. Will you lend to them? And they'll send it out to the 100 banks. 50 of the banks will come back and say, sorry, we cannot lend to this person. Another 50 will say, well, we can lend to this person on the condition of A, B, C, D. Now, if you can't fulfill criteria of A, B, C, D, then it means it removes a certain group. So it means you now got 20 other lenders that are willing to work with you. And then they've got further criteria until you get to two lenders that say, hey, this person's credit is not great, but we're willing to work with this person if they put a high deposit. We're willing to work with this person if the rental income is this. We're willing to work with this person if they fulfill this specific situation. So out of 100, you might only have one option which means your rates might be higher, but you will only know this once you speak to a broker and the broker goes out there and finds you someone. Now a good broker will go out there and within 24 hours come back to you to say, hey, we can't get you a mortgage, but come back to us in three months once you fix this, this and this. So stop self-diagnosing yourself, go to the experts and let them give you an answer. Where should I invest? Now this isn't as simple as just go and invest in Manchester, go and invest in London. That's quite a naive thing to say. There are multiple criteria that you have to understand if you're going to invest in a location. You want to make sure there's a high demand for sale, there's a high demand for rent, there's high employment in the area, there are new businesses moving into that area, the government is investing money in that area and when a government invests money into an area it's usually millions of pounds to hundreds of millions of pounds and what does that do? It drives in new demand in that area and when it drives in new demand in the area it forces property prices to increase. So if you're looking for an investment location you've got to be asking the right questions who and what is driving the property prices and the rental prices in this area? Is there a scheme that's going to push property prices up in this area? That's how you make an investment. I want to start flipping properties. How can I start? Flipping properties is absolutely incredible. And I think every single person should at one stage flip a property because you can get access to chunks of cash. And that chunks of cash will give you the freedom to travel the world if you want to, will give you the freedom to start a business if you want to, but more importantly, give you more cash to go bigger so you can make more money and fulfill your goals. So how do you start flipping? You've got to identify what types of properties you would like to start flipping. There are underlying strategies within strategies. Yes, flipping is a strategy, but there are underlying strategies. So do you want to buy properties with short leases? Fix the lease, extend the lease, and then sell those properties. Do you want to buy studio flats and convert them to one bed and then sell them as a one bed? Do you want to do what I do, which is buy three bed houses, convert the garage to make it a four bed house and then sell them? You've got to pick an underlying strategy under the flip strategy. So you've got to pick a location. Pick the location, pick the underlying strategy that you want to implement under flipping, get a trustworthy builder, make sure you know your end numbers, your end value numbers. Before you buy any property, speak to three or four estate agents 
so that you can understand what they believe they can sell the property for once the work is done. Hey guys, if you get any value from this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And if you'd love for me to answer one of your questions, pop them in the comment section below, and I'll try my best to record a video for you.